And good afternoon and welcome to a windy afternoon here at Bobcat Stadium in San Marcos, Texas. Cable Channel 7 presents another edition of Sam Houston State University football. Today it's the Bearcats and the Southwest Texas State Bobcats. Hello again, everyone. I'm Rod Sidlick. Alongside me today, Jim Dillon and Jim, a very important game today for Sam Houston. Very important. If they want to get in the one double A playoffs, they must win this game today against Southwest Texas. They are seven and three on the season, four and one in Southland Conference play. They have a chance at the Southland Conference Championship, a three-way tie. They win this game today, and Northeastern Louisiana loses tonight at Arkansas State. Of course, you'll know the outcome of it as you are watching the game on the tape delayed basis. But the Bearcats have a very good chance to tie for the Southland Conference Championship. But they need to come out here, and they need to establish a victory today. Southwest Texas is on a personal four-game winning streak itself. They are 4-6 and six on the season, 2-3 and three in Southland Conference play. But the rumor is going around that John O'Hara must win the day. He must beat Sam Houston State, or his job is in serious jeopardy. You're mentioning uh, Southwest Texas head coach John O'Hara. He's in his fifth season with the Bobcats as their head coach, and to date he has posted a 27-27 and record, including one Lone Star Conference Championship and one Division II playoff berth. As you mentioned, the fourth straight win by Southwest Texas last week equals the best winning streak since 1984 for the Bobcats. The last time Southwest Texas won five straight was in 1983 when the Bobcats opened their season with five consecutive victories. Bearcats are coming off a very impressive win over Western Illinois, who was ranked 19th in the nation, 42 to 18. Reggie Lewis had a good game. Luther Turner tied a Southland Conference record held by Buford Jordan, formerly of McNeese State, playing for the San Diego Chargers at 18 touchdowns on the season. He needs one more to break that record. He has 108 points on the season. He needs two more points, or the equivalent of one touchdown to break that same record by Buford Jordan. And there's going to be, we'll keep you up to date, but there's a lot of Southland Conference and Sam Houston State University football records that could go down during this afternoon's game. There's a whole list of them, and we'll keep you updated as to uh, the records being set, but a lot of anticipation for this game as the Bearcats come out on the field. We should have a good one here, but Jim, with this wind blowing, if you may be able to hear it, it could be a factor this afternoon. Winds coming out of the south from the north at about 20 to 25 miles an hour. The only other game that I could, could compare this wind to was in Denton against North Texas State. Maybe not quite as brisky as the wind was there, but it's gonna wind will make a factor in this game. As we will see, as Southwest Texas will be kicking off with the win, Bearcats will be going into the win in this first quarter, so they need to establish field position and try to get some kind of scoring against this win in the first quarter. Yeah, the as you mentioned, the North Texas game. Reggie Lewis having a lot of trouble throwing the football against the wind in that game, suffered a few interceptions. So we'll just have to see, as you mentioned, Bearcats will be going against the wind here in the first quarter. Reggie's arm not as strong as Coach Randleman would like. Brian Osterhaus probably a better thrower into the win. You might see Coach Randleman in the first quarter stick to the run, give it to Luther, and give it to James Shorts, who will be starting in place of Daryl Montgomery, who has lost for the season. James Shorts will start at the fullback position. See a lot of substituting between Shorts, Adnan, Down, Adnan Dow, and Bubba Shaw. Those three should be alternating throughout the game today. And as you mentioned, Brian Osterhaus may see some action. We mentioned that during the North Texas game, we were wondering with the stiff wind and the strong arm of Brian Osterhaus, would he come into the football game? We never saw him in the North Texas game. We may see him this afternoon. Well, if you remember last year, the Bearcats were down 31-10 to Southwest Texas in the fourth quarter. All their hopes and dreams are going right down the drain. And then a backup quarterback named Brian Osterhaus came in the came in the game, engineered to come from behind victory, 32 to 31. You know the Bobcats remember that last year, and they want revenge today. David Haas's kickoff will be taken at the goal line, fumbled by Ricky Davis. He will return over the 15, and a nice open field tackle that time by Southwest Texas. Number 16 for Southwest Texas, Eugene Rogers, the backup quarterback, up to make the stop. For that time, Ricky Davis had a lot of green in front of him. That was the only man that was between Ricky Davis and the goal line. All he had to do was get by that one man, and he had a lot of open room to go down the field and score. That one tackle right there saved a sure Bearcat touchdown because that was the only man left. The Bearcats will come out on offense with Reggie Lewis at quarterback. James Shorts is the fullback, and Luther Turner dots the eye at fullback. Double wide receivers, Henry and Lewis to the left. Now Henry comes in motion near side of the field, handed off to the deep back. Turner hit in the backfield, and he will just get back to the line of scrimmage. Ernie Powell on the tackle there for Southwest Texas. The main goal of that is try to get Ernie Powell, get the running back to go by Ernie Powell on the game, on the play. But the only thing is Powell saw the play developing, and he saw Luther coming in and dropped it for a loss on the play. 
Okay, officially no gain on the play. Brings up a second out and 10. Spot the ball out at the 23-yard line. Now Keith Willis comes out of the ball game, and the Bearcats go with a double tight end set. Lone wide receiver to the near side is Victor Henry. Now pitch it deep in the backfield to Luther Turner. Looks for a block, gets outside. Across the 30, he will be close to a Bearcat first down. Looks like he's going to pick it up, Rod. Nice play, nice run outside by Luther Turner. You can see Southwest Texas stacks that defensive line up front. It's going to be tough to run on because you stack all those defensive linemen up there. They control the run real good. Southwest Texas, they do have an Achilles heel. They are very easy to throw against, but you won't see Randwood probably trying to throw the ball in the first quarter. So it's going to be tough grinding here for the Bearcats because they're probably going to try to keep it on the ground. But as we said, Southwest Texas, you can be sure they're doing it right now. Again, they're stacking up that front line. It's going to be hard to run, especially up the middle. Okay, once again, double tight end set, eye formation, lone receiver out to the left side, handed off to the first back through. That's James Shorts. Good yardage out across the 40 to the 42. Tackle on the play by number 16. That's Eugene Rogers up from his cornerback spot. Nice blocking by the offensive line on that play. They ran it right up the middle. I said they would have a hard time. Sure enough, James Schwartz gets a good gain up the middle. The offensive line is going to be a definite key here in the first quarter. They're going to have to open up some walls for the running backs to go through. That was a good job there by the offensive line to open up the wall on that play. So give him seven yards, bring up a second down and three for Sam Houston. Now Lewis looks like a busted play, ducks it under and will be brought down. And that time really didn't look like that play developed very well at all, Jim. Do not think it was a pass play, and I do not think it was a naked rollout by Reggie. It looked like he wanted to give the ball to Luther on the play. The only thing is Luther was about eight yards to the side of him, and he looked around and said, Luther, what the heck are you doing over there? And then he tried to run with the football. And before he did that, there was about five Southwest Texas Bobcats around him. So loss on the play back to the 37 yard line. Bearcats faced with a third down and eight situation. Just underway, first quarter of play. Split backs behind Reggie Lewis. Now we'll run the draw play to James Shorts. He will get out to the 40 yard line, but he will be about five yards short of the first down and the punting unit will come on for Sam Houston. Well, so far the first series of downs for the Bearcats. We've seen him keep it on the ground on every play. Because of that win, that win is very strong. It's going to be tough for Reggie to throw the ball in the first quarter. They did establish some good running plays. They got some good gains. Just a busted play was a result of the ending of this drive right here. Hopefully, Bar can get off a good punt into the stiff win. 49, A.J. Johnson, a junior two-year letterman out of San Antonio Clements, is back deep to receive the Bart Bradley punt. Against the wind, Bradley gets off a nice punt, drives Johnson back to the 20-yard line, now looking towards the sidelines, and he gets down the sidelines. Nobody's going to catch A.J. Johnson. He will be across the into the end zone for the touchdown. It looked that time, Jim, like they had him stopped on the, on the far sideline. Looked like Re Reginald Oaks was going to run him out of bounds, but he stayed in bounds and went all the way for the touchdown. I don't know how you can explain it. A couple of missed tackles by the Bearcats special teams, and lo and behold, we're back to about the first four games of the year where the Bearcats special teams gave up a touchdown a game, and Dennis is not a good sign to start off the football game. A couple of missed tackles. A.J. Johnson kept it down the sidelines, never did go out of bounds. 78 yards on the punt return by A.J. Johnson, and as a result, the Bobcats get a touchdown via the special teams, and that really does hurt the Bearcat momentum here. Southwest Texas definitely with the momentum right now. The left-footed kicker, Kyle Mat Matlock, puts the extra point attempt up and through, and with 12 minutes and two seconds to go here in the first quarter, a big shock for the Bearcats. Southwest Texas leads it 7-0. If you want to get hurt, by scoring points. You want the offense to do it to you. The Bobcat offense did not put up any points at all last week versus Stephen F. Austin. Ironically, the only touchdown the Southwest Texas scored was on a blocked field goal attempt in the fourth quarter with Stephen F. Austin leading three to nothing. A.J. Johnson recovered the blocked field goal and went 59 yards for the touchdown. So once again, the Bobcats have two touchdowns in their last two games, and both of them are by A.J. Johnson, a blocked field goal for a touchdown, and now a 78-yard punt return for a touchdown. So David Haas has it teed up at the 35-yard line as Victor Henry and Victor Henry and Ricky Davis will drop back in dual safety for Sam Houston. As 81 yards, the punt return for the touchdown for A.J. Johnson.
So 12 minutes, two seconds to go here. First quarter, Bobcat Stadium in San Marcos, Texas. Bearcats looking to get into the 1AA playoffs with the, their final regular season game of the season. Victor Henry from the two. Now looks for a hole, has the 20. Now out across the 30 and will be run out of bounds on the near side by number 31, Butch Maywald. Dangerous situation there to kick the Victor Henry, leading the nation in kickoff returns after the second game of the year against Montana State. Nobody was kicking the ball to Victor Henry. And here they go kicking it to him. Well, they saw Ricky Davis almost break one. Sure enough, Victor Henry almost went all the way. And they're going to bring that one back. Offsides is the indication against Sam Houston, and that's really unfortunate. Offsides on the kickoff return team. That's a highly unusual penalty, and that's such a shame because the Bearcats had good field position to start it off for the offense, and that's what you want going into this win. So a second key blunder for the Bearcats here in the first quarter. We haven't even played five minutes yet. So David Haas will come back on, move the ball up to the 40-yard line, and he will re-kick it. So the Bearcats looking a bit lethargic coming out here in the first quarter, having troubles that plagued them early in the season on the specialty teams. And now they must move the ball against that stiff win here in the first quarter. One positive thing, though, when you have Reggie Lewis and that Bearcat offense with all the powerful skill position people, seven's really nothing because you feel like you're going to put close to 30 or 35 up on the board with this offensive unit. You just don't want to let this Southwest Texas team get the momentum. Don't let them get too far ahead here in the first quarter. Now this kickoff with the win will go out of the back of the end zone. And the Bearcats will come out on offense. First and 10 from the 20 yard line. That's the best defense there against Victor Henry and Ricky Davis. You just kick it out of the end zone as hard as you can. That's why I didn't understand why Madlock didn't try to kick that ball out of the end zone. First of all, it looked like he was trying to kick it short on purpose to set up the return. But when you got Davis and Henry back there, that, that is not a very wise thing to do. Victor Henry goes wide to the left side as the Bearcats stay with the double tight end set as Rob Beecham is tight to the left side and Ricky Eggleston is tight to the right. I formation, Shorts and Turner pitch the ball deep in the backfield to Turner. He will get out across the 20 to about the 24 yard line and pick up of about four yards on that play will bring up a second down and six. Bearcats rushing the ball in the first quarter. They need 194 yards rushing today to set a team record. The whole team record was 2,542 yards for the 1954 Bearcat team. Presently going into the game, they had 2,349, so we got to keep an eye on that, 194 yards. James Lopez checks in at wide receiver. He will go wide to the, to the left side as the Bearcats stay with the double tight end set. Second down and six, ball at the 24-yard line. Hand it off, fullback shorts, now breaks a couple of tackles. He will be about two yards short of the first down. Four yards on that carry. Let's mention some of the other needs for the Bearcat offense today going into the game. Need 24 total yards for total offense in a season. The old record for the team was 4,529. They have 4,506. They've probably already broken that record. They're very close to it. We'll get to the others in a little bit. Third and two, ball spotted at the 28-yard line. Big play for Sam Houston to keep the drive live. Pitch it deep in the backfield. Turner breaks a couple of tackles and will go out of bounds. We'll have enough for the first down driven out of bounds on the near sidelines by Andre Horton, the free safety. Offensive line doing a good job blocking, I guess that strong defensive front of Southwest Texas, providing good running room for James Shorts and Luther Turner. And that's what they're gonna need in this first quarter because you know Randleman's is gonna keep it on the ground. Taking a look at that uh, Bearcat line, the right tackle is Jeff Kirby, right guard Floyd George, the center is Troy Coots, left guard David Elam, and the left tackle is Chris Herman. Ricky Eggleston is at tight end. Rob Beecham now also at tight end as the Bearcats go double tight. Hand the ball off to Turner. Now has a hole, will be out across the 40 yard line on, on the second and 10 carry. Some more, some more needs for the Bearcats this season. 489 yards total offense today will break a Southland Conference record. So we mentioned they got 4,506. The old record's 4,994 yards by Evelyn Christian in 1970. Need four touchdowns for most touchdowns in a season by a Southland Conference team. They have 48. The record's 51 by Evelyn Christian, same year, 1970. Victor Henry is wide to the left side. Second down and five, ball at the 41. Hand it straight up the middle. Fullback, James Shorts, good yardage into Bear, uh, Bobcat territory. 
Once again, number three, Andre Horton, the junior transfer from Austin Reagan, up to make the stop for Southwest Texas. And the free safety's making a lot of tackles here early for Southwest Texas. Give credit to Kirby, George, Coons, and David Elam, and also Chris Harmon. They're doing the job up front, and that's what they're going to need in this first quarter because you know they're going to run it. Well, when they go, when the Bearcats go with a double tight end set, that almost, almost assuredly means run. Lopez is the lone wide receiver, but the Bearcats keep it on the ground at Turner. Now a flag is down as Turner bounces off a couple of tacklers. Once again, Andre Horton drags him out of bounds. I think they're going to catch Jeff Kirby with a hold on that play number 76. It looked like he was dragging a defensive lineman down. I saw it, and also the official saw it too. So Marsh, the Bearcats back 10 yards. Kind of a bitter play there on first down. So first down, and on the good first down play, now we'll put the ball back into Bearcat territory as they will spot it at the 41-yard line. The Bearcats now will scrimmage first and 20. So far, second penalty for the Bearcats in the game for 15 yards. Southwest Texas played a clean game so far. Offense hasn't handled the ball yet. So second, first down and 20, spot the ball at the 41-yard line. Handoff goes to the first back through. That's Shorts. And the junior one-year letterman from Huntsville gets about three yards on that carry. Still a, still bring up a second down and long. One positive note for the Bearcats, the fine defensive end for Southwest Texas, I don't know if you mentioned or not, Rod, Arnold Baker is not playing the day. He is a stellar on that defensive line, but Baker has a knee injury and he has not played, but they still have Jimmy Nelms back there, who's tied for the Southland Conference leading interceptions with six, with who else, Mr. 85 himself, Billy Anderson, who's only played four games back at safety. Now second down and 17, Keith Willis has checked in at a wide receiver, straight back to throw is Reggie Lewis, swings it out, Luther Turner is met on the play, nice play that time by number 16, Eugene Rogers, the junior two-year letterman from Corsicana, up to make the stop for Southwest Texas. Also, Brad Folks, the linebacker, came over on the play. Good pursuit there by Southwest Texas. They read the screen to Luther. It was almost a lateral on the play. It was that close, but they read it. The pursuit did well, and they came over, and they got Luther for just a short game. Reggie's got to put it up in the air here on third down. Third down and 17. Split backs behind the quarterback, Reggie Lewis. Looking to throw, has a man, and the ball is knocked away. Pass intended for Eggleston. Nice defensive play by Jimmy Nelms, along with number 25, Ben Jesse. Bart Bradley back to punt for Sam Houston. A.J. Johnson deep for Southwest Texas. And the ball will roll and will be down. I don't know. The Bearcats think that one of the Bobcats touched the football. Referee says no. And Southwest Texas will take over first and 10. I believe they're going to mark the ball back at about the 23-yard line because I think it hit a Bearcat player, if anybody, when the ball hit. A Bearcat player was blocked into the football, and so they're going to mark it up at about the 22-yard line. So it'll be marked where that Bearcat Touched the ball last, and that was back at the 23-yard line, so it'll be first and 10 for the Bobcats, and finally their offensive unit gets on the field. With 8.06 to go, first quarter of play, and Southwest Texas's Bobcats leading it 7-0 on the 81-yard punt return by A.J. Johnson. The Bobcats come out on offense with Ron Riddleman at quarterback. Richard Gordy is the fullback. Roy Jackson is the tailback. As that time, the pass intended on the far side for number one, Eric Tennessee. Watch him. He's the leading receiver in the Southland Conference. And a flag is down. Coach Ron Randleman said Eric Tennessee, best athlete in his position in the conference, no doubt about it. Eric Tennessee, quick feet, great speed, runs great routes, an excellent wide receiver to watch today for Southwest Texas. That's we number a, one, the senior three-year letterman from San Antonio Holmes. We got a penalty on Southwest Texas for holding here on first down, so we're going to march them back. It's going to give them a first and 20 situation. Look like miscommunication there on that first play. Tennessee ran an in, and Rittman threw it like it was going to be an out. Well, the Bobcats went with a single back offense to start the game. Now Jackson has checked into the ball game along with number two Richard Duffy at the fullback position as the Bobcats go with three wideouts. 
And the ball straight up the middle to Duffy. He will have short yardage. Richard Duffy, the junior transfer who attended the University of Arkansas out of Houston Memorial gets the carry for Southwest Texas. It's going to be tough for Southwest Texas to run on that fine Bearcat defensive line. And they are a good one up there with Marvin Brown, Mike Ober, Huey Blackman, and Andre Finley. It's tough to run on those guys. So the Southwest Texas offense making many switches. They're bringing in about three people with every play. As Mike Murphy comes to the near side of the field and Eric Tennessee, far side, run the draw play to 34. That's Richard Gordy, the sophomore one-year letterman from Georgetown, and he gets just back to the line of scrimmage. And a good play there by Andre Finley, shutting off his blocker and making the good ankle tackle there. Short yards for Southwest Texas. Credit that play to Finley because of his reactions that held a short gain. They could have gotten more yards if it wasn't for Finley on that. Andre Finley, Sam Houston's leading sack man, the sophomore one-year letterman from Houston Forest Brook, having an outstanding season from that strong in position. Now the Bobcats will come out, third down and 16, ball at the 15-yard line. Daryl Grant is the receiver to the near side of the field now. Ritterman looking to throw, has a man wide open, and the ball is caught. That's 32, Reggie Rivers. And that time, Rivers split the seam, and he was wide open. Looked like they had the linebacker coverage on him. Tolly Royal, also Donnie Baltauser, looked like they had coverage on him. And he was just wide open on the play, went right by him for the catch in the first half for Southwest Texas. So spot the ball up to the 45-yard line, first and 10 Southwest Texas, as they are now moving the ball on offense as Mark Murphy and Eric Tennessee both come to the near side of the field. Eye formation behind the quarterback, Ron Ritterman. Hand the ball up to the tailback, that's Roy Jackson. Give him a gain of about one yard on the play, and it'll bring up a second down and nine. Good play there by Mike Ober. Had to come from the opposite side of his position, was playing on the left side, the play went to the right side. Mike Ober's got those quick feet where he can get over and go to the opposite side and get the ball carrier. Good play by Ober to get Jackson on that. So, second down and 10, officially no gain on that last run by Jackson as Eric Tennessee comes to the near side and Mike Murphy goes wide to the far side. One back set for Southwest now. Ritterman looking to throw, has Tennessee, and he will be brought down. Lloyd Powell with help from Ricky Royal, and he will be close to the first down. I think he has it. Good call there by John O'Hare. Just a Quick little in there to Eric Tennessee. Lloyd Powell, also Ricky Royal, playing a little bit back. You don't want Tennessee to burn you on a, on a deep play down the sidelines. And so that play might be open for Southwest Texas, a good part of the game today. Tennessee is close to the first down. They're going to bring the sticks out. We're going to bring it all the way across the field and see if we got the first down. I think you might be right, Rod. I'm, I'm right on top of it. I think he got it by about three quarters of the football. And he did. And it will be first and ten. Half the football. About half. <laughs> About half. About half the football, the length on the first down. 5.27 to go, first quarter of action, Bobcat Stadium in San Marcos. As Jackson, Roy Jackson, the tailback, and 34, Richard Gordy check into the ball game. 45, Bobcats, first and 10. So the Bobcats moving the ball well as Murphy and Tennessee both go to the far side of the field. I formation, Gordy and Jackson behind the quarterback rhythm and now rolling out looking to throw has a man that's Eric Tennessee he is hit and brought down but once again a nice catch by the senior three-year letterman from San Antonio Holmes. Well it's no doubt who Rod Rittman's number one receiver he's going to be going to all afternoon is Eric Tennessee. That triple coverage on that time just a good throw by Rittman a good catch by Tennessee. First and 10 not at the 28 but it's at the 33 yard line Southwest Texas moving the ball in their first possession here in the first quarter. Got a touchdown by the gift of the punt return by A.J. Johnson. They're up 7-0. They're trying to go in 14-0 right here. Murphy and Tennessee are both split to the left side. High formation behind Ritterman. First and 10 ball at the 33-yard line. Bearcat defense looks a little confused here in the early going. Hand it off. Roy Jackson, watch him. He's got speed across the 20-yard line to about the 18-yard line. Hit on the play by 31 Charles Livingston, a defensive back. Brings him down with another first down for Southwest Texas. It was a trap play. You trap it, you give it to the running back. The blockers pull one way and hope you get the defensive lineman, the sucker, to go the same way. And that's what happened there. The lineman pulled, the two guards pulled along with the center. And when that happened, the defensive lineman suckered away and went that way. And when that happened, Roy Jackson had a big hole and got a first down for the Bobcats. 
So Charles Livingston is in now at the defensive back, replacing Meldon Mickles. First and 10, spot the ball at the 18-yard line. Hand it to the tailback, that's Jackson. And a good surge by the defensive line. 98, Mike Ober helps to make the stop on Jackson. It'll be a second down and nine. So the clock runs with three minutes, 50 seconds to go. First quarter, Bearcats trailing at 7-0. Southwest Texas has the ball deep in Sam Houston territory. As Tennessee comes wide to the left side and Mike Murphy goes wide to the right. Single back with the slot to the left side. Riddiman now looking to throw, has a man open. That's Murphy, far side of the field, brought down by Lloyd Powell, but he will still be about five or six yards short of the first down. Primary wide receiver on that play was Murphy because Rittman was looking at him all the way from the snap of the football. Just a short game. You try to get it up to about a third and four, and then you're, able, then you're being able to mix up what you want to do. You could run it or you could throw it. Probably Southwest Texas will try to throw it here because it's hard to run on the Bearcats, especially with a third down, more than three yards to go. So now a big play for Sam Houston. That's 85. Scott Wilson checks into the ball game at a tight end position. Eric Tennessee is in a slot to the left side. Mike Murphy is wide left. Now Riddiman looking to throw. And the ball is almost intercepted. Ricky Royal and Lloyd Powell on the coverage. Pass intended for Mike Murphy. Pass was a little bit high for Murphy, but a good play by Royal and Powell to hit Murphy just as the ball got there. He had to reach up, and when he grabbed it, Lloyd Powell and Royal hit him right as the ball got there and knocked it loose. So a good stand by the Bearcats. They let him get down to inside the 15-yard line. But then the Bearcat defense held, and now a 32-yard field goal here by Matlock. Matlock out of the hold of David Haas, has the wind behind him. Kick is up on its way, and it is no good. No good. So Kyle Matlock, the sophomore from Spring, Texas, fails to get the field goal attempt through. Big play that time for Sam Houston, and now they get the ball back with only with two minutes, 46 seconds. If they could keep the ball and maybe get a couple of first downs on the ground, maybe they could get that win here on this drive. That was a big miss there by Madlock. Good offensive possession there by Southwest Texas. He had the win behind him, so that wasn't much of a factor. The kick was from the left hash mark. He may have thought a little bit about, I can't hook this ball. A little, if I hook it a little bit, it's gonna be wide left. That may have been on his mind. Usually your left-handed kickers, left-footed kickers, like to hook the ball a little bit, and that may have been what happened on that kick as he pulled it left. Hand the ball to Luther Turner. He will have short yardage, about two Number yards on the play. Number 33, rather, Luther Turner on the carry. We got two more needs to talk about here before we finally get him out of the way. 19 yards is the most total yards by an individual in a season, which was by Don Gottlove in 1952, a team record. It was 2,470. Reggie had 2,452. He needs 19 for that. Billy Anderson needs two interceptions to break school record of seven on the year. Second and eight, pitch back goes, Luther Turner, watch him, he turns the corner, puts the move on, he's across midfield to the 40 and run out of bounds over here on the near sideline by number 19, that's Jimmy Nelms. As the referees will say, just at the 40 yard line, big run that time as Luther Turner, when he gets to the corner, he's dangerous. I'd like to comment on it, Rod, but here comes the train. I'm not going to be able to get a word in edgewise, so listen to the beautiful train coming by Bobcat Stadium. First and ten. Ball at the 40-yard line. Fullback James Shorts on the carry. He will have about three yards on that play. Close to four yards, give him four yards on the carry, bring up a second down and six. Bearcats would like to see that clock run out. A minute and 40 seconds to go in the first quarter. Get that clock running, try to run out the time so the Bearcats get the win in the second quarter. Victor Henry is the lone wide receiver out to the left side, pitch it back to the tailback. That's Ricky Davis who has checked into the ball game now. The freshman from Fort Worth, Everman. 
he will bring the ball across the 35 yard line to the 33. So he will be about two yards short of the first down. And you're right, Jim Bearcats trying to milk that clock down and perhaps turn it around and get the win here on this possession. But if they're going to do that, as Turner checks back into the ball game, they're gonna have to pick up this third and two call. Double tight end set, Beecham tight to the left. Ricky Eggleston tight to the right, eye formation, Turner and Shorts. Victor Henry is the lone receiver to the left side. Pitch it back deep in the backfield to Turner, puts the head down and gets out across the 30 yard line. He will have the first down, tackle on the play by Andre Horton. Just good hard running by Luther Turner. They like to bring it around to that right side. Good blocking there by the right side of the offensive line. Turner got the first down, the clock will continue to run. Under 38 seconds to go in the first quarter. They could run one more running play, and then they got that win in the second quarter. So James Lopez now goes wide to the left side as the Bearcats stayed with the double tight end alignment. Clock now under 30 seconds to go, first quarter of play. Hand the ball straight up the middle. Luther Turner is popped. He will get about a yard on that play. But that very well could be and should be the last play of the first quarter. And the Bearcats, barring, or if you, if you look past that punt return for the touchdown, Bearcats playing a, a fairly decent first half, but Southwest Texas did move the ball well. It wasn't a bad quarter for the Bearcats. They moved the ball on the ground, which is a hard thing to do against Southwest Texas because, they, like I said, they, they stacked that defensive line. They put just about everybody they can, except for the cornerbacks and the safeties, up on the line. We knew it would be hard going into the game to run against Southwest Texas, but they did so successfully. Just couldn't get the key third down play. Third down and long, it's hard to throw into that win. The only touchdown, the punt return by A.J. Johnson. You say 81 yards officially for the touchdown, but the Bearcats now will have the win in the second quarter. Bearcats, I don't even have to have a stat chart to figure this out. Had no yards passing in the first quarter. That will definitely change in the second. Look for Reggie to air it out that's in the second was, quarter. The offense will open up a lot more. That's what I was going to ask you, Jim. You think you're going to all of a sudden see Bear and, and you can tell right away, Rob Beecham checks out of the ball game. The Bearcats will will now come out of that double tight end running formation. They will switch to the single tight end double wide receiver passing formation. And as you mentioned, Jim, the Bearcats probably will open it up here as they now have the win. Now we will see a good example of the high scoring multiple offense at Sam Houston State University. James Lopez is into the ball game. He's split wide to the left side. Keith Willis is wide to the right. Eye formation, Shorts and Turner are the setbacks. Tight end Ricky Eggleston is tight to the left side. Second and 10. Ball at the 29 yard line. Now fake the handoff. Reggie Lewis turns it upfield and he will be brought down. He will gain about three yards on the play. Tackled by Todd Davis, sophomore squadsman from Abilene Wiley. What makes Reggie so deadly on that play is you gotta watch him. It, it, it's a naked roll. Looked like he was looking for the tight end on the play. The tight end was well covered, but Reggie can always tuck that ball and run with it. That's why he's such a versatile quarterback. If you drop back and cover the tight end and the receivers, he'll burn you for about 10, 15, maybe 20 yards. Big play for the Bearcats, third down and eight. Lewis looking to throw, has a man. That's Lopez wide open. He will be close. He should have with forward progress, should have enough for the first down. He will have enough for the first down, Rod. Good throw by Reggie. His first really throw of the day with that win. You gotta be careful, you know, with that wind behind, you, you have a tendency maybe to throw it a little bit high over the head, but he threw it right between, right where the nine is, with a little white spot right between, it hit James Lopez. Lopez is a fine receiver, wasn't getting much playing time this year, but now that Billy Anderson has switched over the defensive spot, James Lopez will see a lot more action for the rest of this year and the years to come. De Lopez is a sophomore, one-year letterman from Houston Cypress. Fairbanks ran a nice hook that time. Now Turner on the first down carry, trying to get outside, breaks a couple of tackles and goes down to the 12-yard line. A gain of about six on that play. Once again, you see the tough running of Luther Turner inside. Well, I have a, we need to go down at halftime and check out the stats because Luther is getting pretty close to that 90-yard mark. He needed 90 yards to surpass the 1,000-yard rushing mark for the season and he had about close to about 50 in the first quarter. That's about seven there. So he's closing in on 1,000 yards for the season, and we're also getting close to Luther Turner touchdown territory. Double tight end set, Lopez, lone receiver out to the right side, eye formation, as they one of the Bobcats jump, hand the ball to Shorts. Now, I don't know which way this penalty is going to go. One of the Bobcats jumped, so the center snapped the ball. 
If that is the case, it will be against Southwest Texas, and it is offside Southwest Texas. Southwest a good offside. a good play that time by the center, Troy Coots. When he saw the Bobcat jump off sides, he immediately snapped the football, and therefore the Bearcats pick up yardage on the penalty. Looked like the left tackle, Chris Barty, moved a little bit on that play before the snap. So that will that penalty will give the Bearcats a first and goal situation. Now Bubba Shaw, a junior transfer from Haltom City, is checked into the ball game. Hand the ball off to Turner. He will be inside the five to the four yard line. A gain of four yards on that play. Getting inside the five yard line, getting into Luther Turner territory. He needs one touchdown to break the Southland Conference record. Bearcats would like to tie it up. You got a feeling they're going to give it to Luther at least on this next play. If they don't get it, they might try to go in and get the touchdown, but they really would like to get the ball to Luther, not only to tie up the game, but, but get him that Southland Conference record also for most points scored in the season. Okay, double tight end set. Beecham to the left, Eggleston tight to the right. I formation. Once again, pitch it back. Luther Turner's will be down to the one yard line. Defensive one. play by number 35, Todd Davis, the sophomore from Abilene, up to make the stop. You got one yard, you got probably the, arguably, no doubt, the best runner in the Southland Conference here, number 33, Luther Turner. You got one yard to go. You got double tight ends. You got to bet the bank that Luther's going to get the record right here. Right here, Bubba Shaw, the fullback. Pitch it back. Luther Turner, touchdown, Sam Houston. Like money in the bank, the senior from Lufkin takes it in, and he is the new Southland Conference leader in rushing touchdowns. And we're not in the studio dubbing the tape over, and, and, and we don't know the outcome of the game, and we're not guessing. This was just pure, pure premonition on my part. And, and Luther Turner, as you said, establishes a new Southland Conference record, 19 touchdowns on the season, also 114 points in a Southland Conference season. You don't think the NFL scouts are not looking at Luther Turner? You must be crazy because he is definitely a high NFL draft pick. People would be crazy to pass him up. Extra point attempt by Billy Hayes out of the hole of Bart Bradley is up and good. So with 11 minutes, 56 seconds to go till halftime, your new score, Southwest Texas State 7, Sam Houston 7. You know, you can almost feel the momentum change when the Bearcats got the win in the second quarter. You could tell that they were just trying to, just trying to keep it scoreless or a tie in the first quarter against that win, but yet they were moving the football. When they got that win in the second quarter, you could almost see the momentum change over there on the sidelines in the bench. They could tell that they were going to take it in no matter what they were going to do. Southwest Texas was not going to stop them. It seemed that as soon as they, they turned it around and started going the other way, the Bearcat drive, as we mentioned, would open up. It did open up. We saw we saw a lot of motion. We saw rollouts, and we, we saw the Bearcats do what they do best. Now they have points on the board. Important here, though, for the Bearcat defense, they need to slow down this, this uh, Southwest Texas offense because because the longer Southwest Texas have the ball, even if they don't score, that's time with the win that Sam Houston doesn't have the ball. Defense needs to play tough here in the second quarter. We'll see what Ron Redman and the Southwest Texas offense does here against the win. It'll be their first possession against the win in the second quarter. We'll see if they try to air it out. We'll see if they'll go with what Coach Randleman did and try to keep the football on the ground with Roy Jackson. But as far as the Bearcat case goes, Jerome Heim, his job here is to get a hold of that football and kick it out of the end zone. Don't give him a chance to return that kickoff. Let him start out at the 20-yard line. Back deep for Southwest Texas is number seven, Gerald Bickman, a backup running back. Along with 32, Reggie Rivers. Heim will squib it along the ground. It will be picked up by Brickman. He will be out across the 20 yard line. Now once again breaks a couple of tackles. Ricky Davis, the tailback, up to make the stop on the specialty teams for Sam Houston. Pick up carrying that football, kind of like a loaf of bread. If, it, if Davis could have put a really good hit on him, he may knock that football loose. Uh, Bickman's going to have to be a little bit careful next time when he holds on that football because a lot of football showing when he went down on the ground there. So much for my theory about kicking it in the end zone too. It, Kind of a Phil Negro knuckleball down the sideline. Heim's getting pretty good at that these days. That seems to be his specialty, kicking it like bouncing it along the ground. Now Grant and Tennessee are both wide to the left side, and Murphy is wide to the right. Hand the ball straight up the middle. Roy Jackson across the 30-yard line. He will have about three yards, and it will bring up a second down and seven. 
Tolly Royal up from his weak side linebacking spot makes the tackle for Sam Houston. So wholesale changes for Southwest Texas as 82 Matt Barber checks into the ball game along with number 34 Richard Gordy as the Bobcats will come out with Murphy split wide to the right side. Eric Tennessee is wide to the left. Gordy and Roy Jackson are the setbacks behind Ron Redman. Now play action, looking to throw, has a man wide open that time, 82 to the tight end, Matt Barber, the junior from Austin McCallum. Nobody went with the tight end that time. It looked like Lloyd Powell and Lyche Adams got mixed up on their pass coverage. Like Lloyd looked at Lyche and said, you gonna get him? No, I'm not, are you gonna get him, Lloyd? As a result, neither one of them did, but the pass was a little bit wide for him, so a good break there for the Bearcats. So now the Bobcats are faced with an important third down situation. Very important here if the Bearcats could stop the Southwest Texas offense here, make them punt against the wind, they could get the ball in good field position. Third and seven. Riddiman straight back to throw, looking downfield. Now being rushed out of the pocket is chased and will go out of bounds. Run out of bounds by 98. That's Mike Ober, got a little help from number 36, that's Donnie Boltauser, who's into the ball game, and the Bobcats will have to punt. Good defense that time by the Bearcats. And don't forget about the sack, man. Andre Finley was over there just in case Mike Ober missed him. Andre said, I'll finish it up if you don't get him, Mike. So David Haas, the junior two-year letterman from San Antonio Marshall, checks into the ball game to punt. Billy Anderson back in single safety for the Bearcats. 10 minutes, 56 seconds to go until halftime. Bearcats looking to get good field position. Now, Anderson will have to bounce away, go away from the punt, but it will take a Bearcat roll, and they will be, they will, they will start at the 47-yard line. Unofficially 21 yards on that punt, so not a good punt there by Southwest Texas. Bearcats take over an excellent field position at their own 48-yard line. Let's see what Reggie Lewis and the Bearcat offense can open it up and put the Bearcats to their first lead. Victor Henry goes wide to the right side as the Bearcats come out in a double tight inset. Rob Beecham is tight to the left side. Ricky Eggleston tight to the right. Shorts and Turner are the setbacks. First and 10, ball at the 47. Pitch it deep in the backfield. Luther Turner will be hit, but still breaks off and gets across midfield. Give him three yards on the play. It'll bring up second down and seven. So Turner running the ball well as the Bearcat offense looking much better here in the second quarter as they have the wind to their backs and they really need to put points on the board while they have the wind. Now Beecham checks out of the ball game. Keith Willis checks in and goes wide to the left side. Victor Henry is wide to the right. I formation behind Reggie Lewis. Second down and seven. Lewis looking to throw the football. Now steps up in the pocket. He will run. He will get out to the 45 yard line. He will be about three yards short of the first down. 48, Brad Fulks, the junior two year letterman from Fredericksburg up to make the stop for Southwest Texas. You hear the linebackers back in coverage. You see Reggie take one step forward. You better come back and try to tackle him because he definitely made up his mind and he wanted to scramble with that ball. Picked up a good gain. Let's mention on the play before, Luther Turner goes over a thousand yards on the season on that last carry. He needed 90, so he's got over 90 yards and we're not even near the first half yet. So Luther Turner running it well here this afternoon. Double tight end set for Sam Houston. Third and three, pitch it deep in the backfield. Luther Turner, he is going to be close to the first down. Depending on where they spot the football, it looks from here like he has it. And Jim Dillon says he has it. And now I believe they're going to bring the chains in as they have spotted it back a little bit. They, they did not spot it where I thought they were going to. Now it's going to be very close to the first down. This one ought to be very close. So the chain gang comes in from across the way, stretch them out, and they say, oh, that is close. That is close. They're about six inches short of the first down. And... Ron Randleman says, with the wind and the momentum, let's go for it. You're going for a Southland Conference Championship. You got a high ranking 1AA football. You only got about three inches to go. You got the best runner in 1AA football, in my opinion. You give it to him and let him get that first down. Southwest Texas, nightmares right here, Jim Dillon. Pitch back deep in the backfield to Luther Turner. He stopped behind the line of scrimmage on a, on a drive. That's the play that I wanted to see. The quarterback sneak. 
because I still wake up as, as Lewis gets the first down. I still wake up and remember when the Bearcats were driving for the tying touchdown against North Texas State. Similar situation. Randleman calls for the deep pitch and Turner is stopped in the backfield. Don't give them a chance to stop yourself that deep in the backfield. Good call that time. Bearcats pick up the first down. Maybe Coach Randleman was thinking about that same thing and went up and didn't. As I remember that play now, as the Bearcats were driving against the win and, and Luther came up just short of that first down. So maybe Randleman had that in the back of his mind and called Reggie to sneak it and they did get the first down. Now Willis is wide to the left side. Henry wide to the right. The reverse and Victor Henry We'll look for some place to go turn it up. Now break a couple of tackles and will be brought down by Andre Horton. That time, good second and third effort by Victor Henry, and he will have another Sam Houston first down. Victor Henry did a great job. I thought maybe he cut it in a little bit too early. Looked like he was going to be hemmed in on the play by number 35, Todd Davis. Davis had the angle on him, but Davis just simply missed a the tackle. Then Henry sheer lone effort by himself, picked up some more yardage and got the first down for the Bearcats. Bearcats stayed with the double tight end set, first and 10, spot the ball at the 30 yard line in Bobcat territory. Lone receiver is James Lopez, split out to the right side. And James Shorts carries the football. I don't see any flags down. There shouldn't be any flags down because the ball was snapped. Even though the other offensive lineman didn't move, it's not a penalty if the ball is snapped. Like Troy Coons again tried to draw the offsides penalty by snapping the ball before the real count because the left side of the offensive line did not move before the uh, snap took place, which is David Elam and Chris Herman. They just sat there when the play took place, but James still picked up a good amount of yards, four yards on that. Second down and six, ball at the 25-yard line. Victor Henry is the lone receiver, handed off Luther Turner. He meets a brick wall in the middle of that line. Brad Fulks, the junior two-year letterman from Fredericksburg, up to make the stop for Southwest Texas. Now a big third down situation for Sam Houston. Seven minutes, 24 seconds, clock runs, score tied. Southwest Texas seven, Sam Houston seven. We're at Bobcat Stadium in San Marcos, Texas. Rod Sidlick along with Jim Dillon bringing you all the action of Sam Houston Bearcat football on cable channel seven. Keith Willis goes wide to the left side. Victor Henry is wide to the right. Third down and four. Let's see if Lewis will air it out. He is straight back to throw, rolling it out, looking. Now we'll turn up field and we'll have the first down marker. 48 drives him out of bound, Brad Fuchs, but that time the dangerousness and the great athletic ability of the quarterback, Reggie Lewis. They couldn't come up because the receivers were in the area. When he saw that they had committed, he picks up the first down. Hard I, to defense that. I saw that big open space over there on the right side. Folks and Sean Woods, the linebacker, were the only two over there. I was going, run, Reggie, run with the football. You got a big hole. And he finally did and picked up the first down for the Bearcats. Well, it's important for him not to, to commit on that run too early or they will be coming up and forcing him early. Now the Bearcats have first down at the, uh, first down at the 19. Pitch it deep in the backfield. Luther Turner bounces off a couple of tackles. Looks like he was corralled by the face mask that time by number 19, Jimmy Nelms, a senior three-year letterman from Conroe, Texas, up to make the stop. Give him a gain of five yards on that play, and it will bring up a second down and five. So the Bearcats getting closer once again to pay dirt as Keith Willis goes wide to the left side. Victor Henry will be wide to the right. Tight end split, uh, tight to the right is Ricky Eggleston. Second down, officially four yards to pick up the first down. Lewis staggering his count. Now goes on the long count, handed off. Luther Turner finds a crease and will go down to the 10 yard line. Now the Bearcats say they've recovered a fumble. I believe the ball has been whistled down. It has been and the Bearcats now will be faced with a third down and one. Interesting situation for Coach Ron Randleman, offensive coordinator Vance Gibson, and the rest of the offense. What should you run here? Third down, you got about two yards to go. You got a great running back in Luther Turner. You can roll it out. You can throw the naked at the Ricky Eggleston. That'll get you the first down right there. The Bearcat offense is so explosive. They got several figures that they can go to on this play. Third down, closer to two yards. One wide receiver over here on the near side is Victor Henry, double tight end set. Now the bootleg and Reggie Lewis looking and he will go out of bounds and he will be very close to the first down depending on, depending on where they spot the football. It's going to be about a foot or two short of the first down. 
Coach Ron Randleman facing another big fourth down situation. And why not? He went for it back here. Go for it up there inside the 10 yard line. If you don't get it, Southwest Texas starts off in bad field position. You got about a yard to go. Let's see what happens. Bearcats needing the touchdown. As we mentioned, need to get those points while they have the win. Rat, Coach Ron Randleman rolling the dice. Now pitch it deep in the backfield. Luther Turner turns it upfield and we'll have the first down. And Jim, that really scared me to death because Luther Turner gets the ball. He's four yards deep in the backfield. A good block there by David Elam on the safety, Jimmy Nelms. Nelms came up to try to contain the play, but Elam put a great block on Nelms, enabling Luther Turner to get the yards needed for the first down. So give credit to David Elam on that play. So clock runs with five minutes, 10 seconds to go here before halftime. As, as it has really seemed like it has been a quick first half as both teams have primarily kept the ball on the ground. Victor Henry is the lone receiver to the left side. Pitch it out. Luther Turner inside the five to about the two yard line. And you know, Luther Turner, I think he wants to extend on that Southland Conference touchdown and scoring record. Why not? You got a running back that can average about three to four yards a carry. Even if there is no blocking for him on the play, you're at the two yard line. Why not give it to Luther Turner two more times to get the touchdown? You got two plays made probably three to get two yards. Give it to Luther Turner every time. Coach Randleman wants to see Luther Turner get 20 touchdowns on the season. That is an unbelievable record for any type of football, even Division I, that's a great record. And I'm sure they'll give it to Luther on this play too. Second down and two, pitch it to turn. Now fumbles the football and will pounce back on it. Almost near disaster for Sam Houston. And now they're going to be faced with a third and goal from about the eight yard line. So a big play that time as Luther Turner could not handle the pitch. Luther got a little bit anxious. Looked like he was looking at the hole before he got a hold of the pitch by Reggie Lewis. Looked upfield a little bit, did not lick the ball into the hands. And as a result, dropped it back at the eight yard line. So now it's a third and goal for the Bearcats at the eight. Third and goal. Clock runs with four minutes, three minutes, 47 seconds to go. Big play for the Bearcats. They stay with the double tight end set. Lewis back to throw, swings it out. Ricky Davis looks for the goal line, turns it up, and he has it. Ricky Davis takes the swing pass into the end zone from eight yards out, and the Bearcats go up 13-7 with the extra point attempt to come. And good to see the young freshman from Fort Worth, Everman, get into the end zone. This must be hard to believe, but the offensive line coaches Running back coach Bob Riley, who could not make the trip this week due to an illness, says that Ricky Davis could be the best running back ever at Sam Houston State University. He just needs a little seasoning behind. They said he could be even better than Luther Turner, which is hard in my mind to believe, but they say he's got that kind of ability. They remind him a lot of a Marcus Allen. Extra point attempt is up and good, and Ricky Davis has outstanding speed and outstanding quickness. He has good moves. If you watch him return the kickoffs, you can see it. So we mentioned, Jim, important. Bearcats take advantage of the win. They've taken advantage of the win, and they've taken advantage of the Bobcats. They're up 14 to seven. And two other big factors, field position. They've had good field position throughout the entire first half and time of possession. The Bearcat offense has been on the field a good majority of the first half. The Bobcat defense has been on the field as a result a good majority of the first half. That defense has got to be getting tired out there. That offense, to help the defense out, needs to put together a good possession here and take some time off the clock and go in the locker room down 14-7. A key drive here for the Bobcat offense. If they can't do anything and have to punt the ball back to the Bearcats, the Bearcats will again get the ball in good field position. They'll try to drive it in, make it 21-7. So Jerome Heim has it teed up at the 35 yard line. Back deep for Southwest Texas is Gerald Bickman, once again, along with 32 from Reggie Rivers. As the ball blows off the tee, three minutes, 36 seconds to go. First half of play, Bobcat Stadium in San Marcos, Texas, the site of this afternoon's final regular season contest for the Sam Houston Bearcats. Himes kickoff, now this time he drills it deep and that one is way out of the back of the end zone. Smart play that time, as I don't know why he didn't do it the first time he kicked with the win, but it goes out of the back of the end zone. Bobcats come out on offense, first and 10 from their 20 yard line. Ritterman once again comes out at quarterback. He will have 32, Reggie Rivers now in at a tailback position. 
as the Bobcats go with the single back set. Eric Tennessee and Daryl and Daryl Grant are both to the left side. Murphy is wide to the right. Haas looking to throw. And the ball is almost picked off by Charles Livingston. That time Riddeman floated the pass and and 31, Charles Livingston almost came up with this first interception. Livingston had the play read all the way, came over to try to pick up the ball, hit him right in the hands, which is probably the worst place you can hit on a defensive back is right in the hands because sometimes they're not looking for that football they hit him there, and, and that's where it hit him, and he just playing, dropped the football, but a good play there by Livingston. Charles Livingston has seen a lot of playing time since o Odie Harris is not with the team anymore, and Meldon Mickles was playing over there, but Charles Livingston has seen a lot of action. He's going to get a test today as the pitchback goes Roy Jackson. Now he'll get out across the 25-yard line, brought down on the play by Billy Anderson with help from Tolly Royal. Seven-yard gain that time for Jackson, the senior tailback from Aldine MacArthur. Now the Bobcats will be looking at a third down and three situation ball at the 27 yard line. Murphy goes wide to the left side as Eric Tennessee comes wide to the near side. I formation, Gordy and Roy Jackson are the setbacks behind Ron Riddeman. Now Riddeman looking to throw the football, has it complete, tied in Matt Barber, junior one year Riddeman from Austin McCallum, complete gets the reception and the Bobcats have a first down. That's one of those plays in which you could look like a, the smartest person in the world or, or the dumbest because if the linebacker freezes on that play, he's there to pick off the pass, but the linebacker fades back a little bit, then the tight end's wide open and that's what happened on that play. Tight end caught it, bobbled it a little bit, but came down with the football. So Southwest Texas gets a key first down. They're, they'll be able to take some more time off the clock here. Darrell Grant and Eric Tennessee are both split wide to the left side. Mike Murphy is wide to the right as Richard Duffy has checked in at tailback, flags fly. It will be a legal procedure penalty against Southwest Texas, so that will back the Bobcats up five yards. Two minutes, 16 seconds to go, first half. So spot the ball back at the 33-yard line. Bobcats have it, first and 15. Eric Tennessee goes wide to the left side along with 13, Darrell Grant. Mike Murphy is wide to the right. Clock runs under two minutes. Now hand the ball back to Jackson. Jackson gets it up to about the 37, 38 yard line. And it looks here, Jim, like the Bobcats are just going to let, trying to run the clock out here in the second quarter. That's true, you don't want to give the ball back to a powerful Bearcat offense that has a win in the second quarter. Looks like since they're facing a first down and fit, first down 15 situation, now it's second down and about 11 yards. They're gonna to try to run the clock out, so probably look for the Bearcats to use all three of their timeouts to get the Bobcats to punt the ball back to Sam Houston State. You see if they can move the ball down the field with no timeouts and probably about a minute and 10 seconds to go. So the Bearcats take the timeout. It's gonna really be important coming out in the second half, Jim, to see how the Bearcats react when they have to go against the wind again. And uh, you know they've got the seven point lead. If you take away the punt return, the Bearcat defense has played pretty well here in the first half. But the Bearcats are going to have, the defense is going to have to keep them in the ball game when Southwest Texas has the win in the second half. It's true, offense gets all the show and the publicity, but if you want to be a championship team, you win it by defense. And every football coach will tell you that. You gotta have a good defense if you want to go places. Daryl Grant, the junior from Miami, Florida, split wide to the left along with Eric Tennessee. Mike Murphy is split to the right side. Now Riddeman looking to throw, has the ball knocked away. I believe it was number 63 for Sam Houston. Good pressure by Kelly Oates on that play. He came up there, shed it off the block, put his hands up in the air, and deflected the pass by Riddeman. Kelly getting a lot of playing time this year. A person we did not hear about much in spring practice and, and all the drills and everything. Made a good showing in the first game of the year in San Angelo versus Angelo State. That's where we first heard of him. And he's been a good backup back. Both incomplete, which killed the clock. Bearcats still have two timeouts and will probably get good field position here. David Haas back to punt. 
gets a good kick away as Billy Anderson corrals it. Now looks for somewhere to go and will be tripped up on the play. 82, that's Matt Barber, a tight end, along with 85, Scott Wilson on the tackle. And the Bearcats will come out first and 10 now. What do you expect to see here with only a minute, 22 seconds to go? I was about to say, Swather, if there's been one thing suspect about the Bearcat offense this year, it's been their two-minute offense. It, it hasn't been really as crisp as it was last year when the Bearcats had several scoring drives under two minutes to go in the half. Let's see what Coach Ron Randall and the Bearcat offense does. They have two timeouts. And let's see what happens. Reggie Lewis now was looking to air it out. He's trying to go long, and the ball is overthrown. That time, good coverage. A.J. Johnson, one of the best defensive backs in the Southland Conference, was step for a step that time with Victor Henry. In fact, he outran Victor Henry down the, down the sideline. Henry's only chance to have caught that ball would have been had it been overthrown. Now Shorts checks out of the ball game along with Victor Henry. Keith Willis will go wide to the right side, wide to the left is James Lopez. Ricky Davis now is into the ball game along with Luther Turner. Straight back to throw is Reggie Lewis. Has a man wide open, Lopez drops the football. Believe he heard footsteps that time coming across the middle. Dad, and also the football was thrown a little bit behind him. He kind of had to go across his body to make the catch. And when he did that, just didn't coordinate the arms with the football the way you're supposed to when you make the catch and he dropped the football. So the Bearcats now faced with third and 10, one minute, 10 seconds to go, first half of action. And a first half that almost flew by now as these last couple of minutes are kind of slowed down a little bit as both teams have started trying to throw the football. Now Tim Rohn has checked into the ball game. He's wide to the right side. Vic Keith Willis is wide to the left. Reggie Lewis looking and throws the pass. It's tipped up and caught by Ricky Eggleston across midfield, out of bounds at the 40-yard line. How do you like that? <laughs> I don't know what the heck can you say about that. The ball hit Keith in the, in the hands and then hit off Jimmy Nelms' helmet. Popped straight up in the air. And there's Ricky Eggleston, they catch the deflected mass hysteria and run down the field. I had to hold my breath. I, I, I thought that one of the Bobcat defenders had a chance to pick that one off. But as, oh. as big Ricky Eggleston was lumbering downfield, all of a sudden here comes the football in his hand. Oh, call Craig Robertson Channel 2 for that on Sunday highlights. Once again, the pass is thrown behind Ricky Eggleston. Rick, Re, Reggie Lewis really doesn't look that sharp this afternoon. Reggie will be the first to tell you, he doesn't have one of the strongest arms in football. And that might be one hindrance against him by the NFL scouts that said he doesn't have a pro-type quarterback arm. And in situations like this where the wind is really strong, Reggie does have a hard time throwing the football. Second down and 10. Lewis looking as the receiver fell down on the play. A.J. Johnson once again on the coverage almost had the interception for Southwest Texas State. And the Bearcat passing game is not looking sharp here in the final minute of the second half, of the first half. So the Bearcats now will be faced with a third down and 10 situation. James Shorts checks back into the ball game as Ricky Davis comes to the near sideline. Keith Willis will go wide to the left side. James Lopez will be wide to the right. Lopez and, er, Shorts and Turner will be the tailback split behind the quarterback, Reggie Lewis, on third down and 10. Lewis now trying to set up the screen, has it to Shorts, a flag is down. Shorts will be across the 25 down to the 20, but hold everything. We're gonna bring it back because they're gonna say the two offensive linemen were down past the line of scrimmage. They're gonna call an eligible man downfield. Let's wait and see. Coach I'm pretty Ron, sure that's what the Coach call. Ron Randleman is out on the field. I don't think he's too happy about that call. Well, he's not happy because this is about the fourth time this year that they've called this penalty on the Bearcats. If I think that's what they're going to call. No, it looks like they're going to call it against Southwest. Disregard the flag. Okay, this is the situation. Against North Texas State and Denton, he was very irate after the game because they called three times that they said the offensive linemen were ineligibly downfield. It's a very close call. It's hard to call that. But it looked like Floyd George was 
not past the line of scrimmage on the play, and that's what they were going to call, but then they disregard the penalty, and, and Coach Rod Randleman must have told him, he said, hey, these offensive linemen are not down the field, and so apparently they disregarded the flag. So the ball's down at the 20-yard line. Count the pass play. Once again, try to swing it out to Shorts, but it's incomplete. That uh, pass just a little bit out of the reach of the junior tailback. Might be one difference there between James Shorts and, and J.J. Middleton is J.J. had the great hands, and so did Daryl Montgomery coming out of the backfield, catching the football. There's one negative factor about James Shorts. He doesn't have the great hands, not really a great catcher of the football. And you can see a good example right there. Hit him right in the hands, and it fell straight on the turf. Second down and 10, 31 seconds to go here in the first half. Lewis facing a blitz, now hangs it up, and the receiver is held. Ricky Eggleston was held that time by Jimmy Nelms, and Nelms might have prevented a touchdown, but Southwest Texas will get the penalty. Jimmy Nelms looked like he had good coverage on the play. I don't know what he was doing. He, he saw Eggleston, he was right on him, and then when he went by him, he just grabbed Eggleston by the waist and tried to pull him down while the pass was still back at the 20-yard line, so they're going to catch Jimmy Nelms for defensive holding on that play. Or they could call pass interference. Which one do you think they'll call? They'll, Defensive they'll, holding or pass they'll interference? They'll probably say it was holding. They're they'll gonna call just, pass interference. It, it all depends on whether the receiver was the intended receiver. Well, he, they, he was the intended, intended receiver, receiver, so they will call pass interference. So the Bearcats in great field position. 24 seconds to go. Eight yards can put them up by two touchdowns, and they'll definitely have the momentum in the locker room at halftime. Okay, here's your situation. 24 seconds to go. Bearcats have it first and goal at the eight-yard line. Split backs now behind the quarterback. Now Lewis looking to run the option, turns it upfield. He will have the one yard line. The Bearcats will take the timeout now with 15 seconds to go in the first half. A nice play that time as Reggie Lewis looked to run the option, kind of picked his way down the line and found his hole, turned it upfield and got what he could out of it. This might be kind of Funny to say, I don't know, but Reggie's really not that brilliant of an option quarterback. He does not run the option that well. When he does run that type of option play, he will keep it 100% of the time. Coach Ron Randleman said, Reggie, when you're running that option, do not pitch the football. We saw it at Lamar when he tried to pitch the football. He threw it straight in the ground. Lamar recovered the fumble on the play. He likes for Reggie to run that play by himself, keep the football, get what yards you he can't. If Reggie, if you ever see Reggie pitch that football, you'll see a good little talk from Coach Ron Randleman on the sidelines after that play. So we won't tell the opposing team about that strategy, but any way you look at it, the Bearcats are now in the driver's seat. They are one yard away from Pater and going in ahead at halftime by two touchdowns. Now the referee is over here on the near sideline talking to head coach Ron Randleman. I'm not sure what this discussion is about. Maybe he's telling him, uh, don't call an eligible man downfield again on me when we get that screen pass set up so well. Because it seems see that he influenced them pretty well here in the first half because they disregard the penalty. But you got 18 seconds to go, 15 seconds, check it. You're in Luther Turner territory. He fumbled the ball last time, but give it to Luther. Let him get number 20 on the year oh, before halftime. Might, might as well. And you know, one, one record that we mentioned at the outset, the Bearcats going to, trying to break that 1970 record by Abilene Christian for total offense in a season by a Southland Conference team. And they are, you know, it seemed kind of stra strange that it was sort of out of reach. I mean, 485 yards. But you're thinking about this Bearcat offense, that's not really out of reach for the Bearcat offense. Now first, second and goal, ball at the one yard line. Pitch it to Turner, turns it upfield and will not get into the end zone. Timeout by Sam Houston. And I really hate to see that real deep pitch this deep in, in uh, Bobcat territory. You can pretty much guess also that the Bobcat defense is keen on Luther Turner, knowing that Coach Randleman and the rest of the offense wants to get Luther another score to help him increase that record so you know that all 11 guys on defense for Southwest Texas are looking at one person and that is Luther Turner. So maybe you want to go somewhere else here on third down. You got no timeouts. If he doesn't get in the end zone, you probably don't get the field goal team out there in enough time to kick the field goal. So probably look for a, for a rollout by Reggie, either throwing the ball or running it into the end zone. That would be the ideal play here with no timeouts on third down. And you might on that play, you may want to send Luther Turner going the other way send him one way, send the quarterback on the option run or pass the, uh, to the opposite side of the field. That may initially draw the uh, Bobcat linebackers towards that side and then give Lewis the option of run or pass. 
I like the roll here to this side of the field. The roll to the left side to Ricky Eggleston. Look for that play. Look at him to roll and try to hit Ricky. Now he will roll to the short side of the field. Wide open is Eggleston. He drops the football. Fourth down and two, and the field goal unit will come on for Sam Houston. You know, I almost got that play right. I said they would roll it here to the left side, but instead they rolled it to the right side and tried to hit Ricky. He was right open on the play. He just simply dropped the football. Had it in the back of the end zone in his hands, went in and out of his hand. 19-yard field goal attempt with only six seconds to go. Out of the hold of Bart Bradley, Billy Hayes, the junior place kicker from LaPorte's field goal attempt is up and it is good. So with three seconds to go in the first half, your new score, Sam Houston 17, Southwest Texas State 7. Bearcats did get the field goal, did get points up on the board, which is always important to be the last team to score before going into the locker room at halftime. But you really would have liked to see him get that touchdown to go into the locker room. That could be may, maybe a moral victory there for Southwest Texas that they held him to the field goal instead of the touchdown. Southwest Texas 10 points down instead of being 14 points down going into the locker room at halftime. And they will come out with the wind and that may be one of the things that they will consider in the locker room. But right now the Bearcats have to kick the ball off once again. I look for Heim to squip this one along the ground. There's only three seconds to go until halftime. So the Bearcats trying to wrap up a, another eight and three season with a victory here over Southwest Texas. They could do that and probably would remain the winningest team in Division I in the state of Texas. You know, over the last three years, Jim, in Division I-A and Division I-AA, no team has posted more victories in the last three years than Sam Houston. And in this fourth year, if they win the day, that will be 33 victories in four years. And presently they have 32 victories and 11 losses. 32 and 11, so if they win, they'll be 33 and 11 over their last four years. Not a bad winning percentage at all. Back deep. Gerald Bickman, along with 32, that's Reggie Rivers. The ball's taken on the run by Brick, Brickman. Now he gets outside, but will be corralled and swarmed under. Bickham, tackle on the play by Malcolm Royal. But that's the end of the first half. Here from Bobcat Stadium in San Marcos. Your halftime score, Sam Houston 17, Southwest Texas 7. Stay tuned because halftime activities, and there's a lot of them here in San Marcos, are coming up next. Ladies and gentlemen, Davis Strutters would like to perform a country dance to Cotton Fields. Strutters would also like to dedicate this dance to the Bobcat Pack, Dr. John Sandberry and Mr. Jim Williams. Thank you for your courtesy and hard work in making this football season's halftime show successful. This is their last performance of the season. The students would like to wish their seniors the best of luck and thank them for all their dedication. In 1987, 88 captains, uh, captains are Allison Family, Desiree Johnson, Kelly Sawyer. The lieutenants are Nancy Pierce, Tony Ellis, Debbie Major, Pauline Evans, Kathy Livingston, and Stanley, and then the team, Chris Mabin.
Now, ladies and gentlemen, the center of the Southwest Texas State University Bobcat Band. The Bobcat Band is under the direction of John Stansbury and James Williamson. The drum major of the Bobcat Band is Ronnie Cruz, the senior music education major from Dickinson, Texas. Future tourers are Tina Boudreau and Elizabeth Thurber from Houston, Texas. For your enjoyment, the Bobcat Band will perform the theme from John Belushi's popular movie, 1941. Thank you. 